This is a, a high level pit to port concept model that we might do in a software presentation of Flexim. It uses default objects and doesn't look particularly like the real life equivalent, but that can be done at a later stage. So a representation of a mine. We've got a source and queue that represents the coal in the mine, and a conveyor that, that represents the extraction. The processor represents crushing, sizing, blending, etc. And finally we have a stockpile for the coal to be waiting ready to be collected. So in this simplified process what you see is the coal coming out of the mine onto the conveyor and waiting before it can be processed and then put into the stockpile. We can go into an awful lot more detail for each process or whatever within the mine but um, in this case we're going to go up the way towards pit to port rather than down the way into details of individual mines. Later on, once we have got a bigger picture of everything, we can then go back and have a look at individual mines and individual processes. You can see summary statistics of each of the objects and what it's important to remember is later on when this is turned off, all of this information is still being tracked, so whether it's stockpiles, queues, waiting times, blockages, etc. All of this is being managed by the system internally and it can be reported at, at any time. So what we're going to do just now is then we're going to aggregate and group all of these objects onto one what we call virtual visual tool uh, and then save it as a library item. And once we've saved it as a library item then we can drag um, each one over and replicate as many as often as we want. We'll do eight for this particular model. Now we have our main set up. We'll start on the, the pit to port network. Um, first of all, we'll start dragging over stockpiles um, for each of the areas. So we've got a road network, uh, an internal rail network, and then an, an external rail network going to a couple of ports. And then we just start linking together all of the stockpiles. Once we've done that, then we shall pull over some of the transporters. Now the transporters um, in this particular model are all the same. Later on, at some point, when we start going into some detail, we shall make the transporters either trucks, trains, ships, etc., or whatever we want to do at the time. So we'll now populate the model with the transporters. Um, so there are also each set of transporters is managed by what we call a dispatcher, which is effectively a fleet manager. We don't need to add individual transporters all the time. We can just add a few and then copy and paste, um, basically replicating fleets as we go. This saves quite a bit of time in the modeling process. Once we've done this, link them all up with the dispatchers, then we're good to go. So when we hit run, you can see the objects, the, the core objects running along the conveyors in each of the mines. And once the process is finished, then the trucks go and pick up the coal to take them to the next stage. Um, and on it goes until the model starts filling up. Um, now if we were to speed it up a little bit quicker, you shall see that the stockpiles in each of the coal mines start to struggle a little bit. This is probably because there is not enough trucks taking the, the mine from the coals towards the to the rail network. Now if we just go back to the model, have a little tweak, copy five of the trucks and put an additional five into that area um, and link them all up and run the model again, then you will see that the things have changed slightly. Um, the, the, the coal piles are better on the mine side but they're beginning to stack up a little bit at the beginning of the, of the real network. Now we're not really using any analytics at the moment. It's just a matter of having a look to see uh, what happens and just playing around with it to give some kind of an idea of what's going on. Now in order to do some, some proper analysis we need to start looking at things like analytics and experiments. So that's what we're going to do just now.
So finally, what we're going to finish with is an experiment where we're going to see if we can figure out the correct number of transporters that are required to go along that middle section of the model, the one we're calling at the moment, which is the internal railway. We have eight scenarios and ranging the number of transporters from 2 through to 16. Um, we change the, the number of them by selecting the, the dispatcher, as I mentioned earlier, which is effectively the fleet manager. We also change or add a KPI, which is quite literally the throughput of the original stockpile. Uh, and then we run the model to see what happens. So finally, the, the last page of the experimenter run, where we can see, we can set up the, the duration and the number of scenarios for each experiment. The experiment is being, being run at the moment. You can see the red lines changing to green. These are actually multiple experiments being run at the same time. My, my particular computer can run eight experiments at the same time because we're running a quad core with interlace. Once it's finished, then we click on the results to see how many trucks are required. Okay, we can see here that uh, as we increase the number of transporters, the throughput also increases um, up until 14, and then it begins to slow down. And after 16, there are no additional throughputs available for for the model. This tells us that the number of trucks for this particular part of the model is 16, potentially 15, but we would look into it a bit more detail. So that concludes our high-level representation of a pit-to-port simulation model using Flexib. If you have any questions, please contact me. My name is Kenny McLeod, and you can find my details on YouTube.